everyone. This is Dr. John Morris, and I want to welcome you to a study of Jonah. I call it the Word of God in a four-act play uh, because it is about the Word of God, and one of the ways we're going to look at Jonah as if it were a four-act play. We're going to look at Jonah in its literary context. Jonah is a story. It's a great story, and because it's a story, we can kind of look at it that way. And I, I think in the literary context will not only be the four acts of the play, but Jonah in the literary context of the Bible. And I think this is important because sometimes we, we forget that the Bible is a revelation from God and it's a revelation about God. Now, God in his mercy speaks to us in terms that we can understand. He uses human characters. He uses the, the stories in the Old Testament to speak to us because we understand them, we relate to them. But the stories are really not so much about David or Samson or something, or even Jonah. The stories are about God and what they reveal about God. And I'll give you an example. Think about the book of Genesis in the beginning. People today love to argue about exactly what a day means and it's seven days or whatever and if the snake had legs or not and if he had legs, how many legs did he have and, and scholars get very, very interested in these kinds of things. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not questioning the literacy and accuracy of the Bible, but my position, my argument is the story of the Garden of Eden is not so much about how many legs the snake had, but it re what it reveals about the character of God. Now, God is good. God is righteous. God must address sin and God must react to sin. And in the, the story, God has to kick the people out of the Garden of Eden because they have rebelled against him. So he uses the story of Adam and Eve to tell us about Adam and Eve, but behind that even more, he used that story to tell us about himself and his righteousness and his character. And that's more important to the overall revelation of the Bible than how many legs the snake had. I, I think I hope you you kind of get what I'm going at here. And in the same context or same token, Jonah is not so much about a prophet or a big sea storm or even a great fish or the Ninevites. The story of Jonah reveals to us the character of God. Now we enjoy the story. I hope you all get a chance to watch Veggie Tales. It's a it's a great time. But we have to ask ourselves, what does that reveal to us about God? In this class, we're going to be talking a lot about the sovereignty of God because I think that's one of the things that Jonah reveals. God is sovereign everywhere, not just in Israel, but in Nineveh, uh, in Tarshish, even on the sea, which were to the, the Jews of the time, the scene of chaos and, and, and out of control power. God is sovereign everywhere everywhere. God is sovereign over everyone, the Ninevites, the sailors, and even God is sovereign over things. So if you read Jonah, you will find out that the ship obeys him, the storm obeys him, the fish obeys him, the worm obeys him, the gourd, everything in Jonah obeys God except Jonah, which kind of, you know, puts us at odds with God and causes us to ask some questions. Now, the second thing that Jonah reveals about God is God's mercy. And this is just, Jonah cannot get his head around this. God decides who God will be merciful to. Now, Jonah has set himself up in opposition to God. Jonah has decided the Ninevites do not deserve the mercy of God. And that, that drives the story. And it comes to the point in the end where God has mercy on the Ninevites because they have repented, and Jonah just cannot live with that. In fact, he says, I'd rather be dead than live in a world where the Ninevites can repent and receive God's mercy. And Jonah ends with an open-ended question. God asks Jonah, uh, don't you have compassion on these people? And God asks Jonah, are you mad at me because I do have compassion on the people? And that question is never answered. And I think one of the reasons it isn't is because it forces us to answer that question about ourselves. Are we mad with God? Can we not tolerate a merciful God who will have mercy on people who repent that we don't think deserve repentance? So, as we go through Jonah, watch how this plays out, and uh, looking forward to seeing you along the way in videos or somewhere else. So until then, bye-bye.